What is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Yes, it's been a couple of days. I can't lie. Sunday after the game, I was out. I was enjoying myself after Chelsea managed to somehow secure some sort of European football next year. And then yesterday I was on a live and today I felt like I finally sit down and sum up the end of the season. It's finished for everyone and Chelsea have somehow miraculously made a real late jump to get themselves up the table. What I will say is we are literally a couple of subscribers away from two and a half thousand subs. So if you feel like subscribing, you've been watching during the season, two and a half thousand subs to finish off would be absolutely amazing. If you're new, make sure to like the video. If you're just enjoying the content, give it a big thumbs up. See if we can get 25 likes on the video. That's where we've been recently. But let's get into it, shall we? Let's have a little bit of a chat because there's definitely some rumours coming out of Stamford Bridge. And there's definitely some, some tough conversations to have. Let's be real about this. I think let's start with... Chelsea and how the season finished we obviously played Bournemouth I don't need to go into that game too much we probably saw a goal of the season contender from Moises Casado, who by the way I thought had a brilliant game as well and has absolutely finished the season so so strongly for me one of the best sort of if you want to call him defensive midfielders in the Premier League but I believe now he's offering a little bit more to his game but on and off the ball He's improved so much for me. And from the beginning of the season and even halfway through at some points to where he is now, I'm so, so happy with that development. And obviously, Pochettino has to take some credit for that. And not only him, there's other players as well that um, I really think he can take credit for. We obviously scored <clears throat> a good goal through Raheem Sterling. It, it went into the net a little bit messy, but what Raz did to get himself into that position, I, I really liked. I thought he was really direct. I think he's a real good player, and I think he's been unfairly treated at times for Chelsea. That There are moments when he doesn't do something great, and the whole stadium gets on his back. And I, I just want to address that. I don't think it's fair, and I think there are players that play for Chelsea Football Club that have done far worse than him. And... Uh, they don't get nearly the stick. All right, they might not nearly get the same amount of money, but look, we aren't in control of that as fans. What we can do is support a player when they're doing something well, and we don't have to jump on their back every single time. There's a, there's a definite agenda against Raheem Sterling from a lot of Chelsea fans. I'm just not into it. Um, we obviously scored two goals. We conceded one straight away as well. And then once Poch made a couple of substitutions, I don't know whether it was that they were rusty or we just weren't really at it because the season was pretty much done and we knew we had a win or a draw in the bag. But it kind of fell apart a little bit, if I'm honest with you. Bournemouth started to, or they finished the game pretty much all over us. They were popping the ball around. They brought on that Alex Scott. Wow, that kid's some player. I thought um, Taylor, the ref, didn't have a good game either. And it just kind of fizzled out the game, if I'm being completely honest with you. It just turned into a bit of a, um, a final sing-song for Thiago Silva. The goodbye to Thiago Silva was absolutely one of the most emotional moments I've had around Chelsea Football Club in a long time. It takes me back to that day John Terry left. Um, takes me back to some of the other times when you've seen final lap of honours knowing people would go. But for him to do a speech on the same sort of level as how John Terry was doing it and the, the some of the loudest voicing I've heard all season from Stamford Bridge singing his song... Um, singing his name yeah it was it's a tough watch to say goodbye to a player of his quality and I've already said how much I'm going to miss him and that just made it hit home a little bit more uh, I think well done to Chelsea Football Club and all involved for making that such a special moment for Thiago Silva a couple of other players walk around the pitch and for me I question whether or not that might be the last time I see him as well I saw Trevor Chalobah sort of in thought on his knees at one point um, looking like he was sort of thanking thanking people for, for the chance and thanking um, himself and others around him probably and beliefs that he has for the opportunity that he's been given to represent Chelsea Football Club and Conor Gallagher and his whole family were pretty much on the pitch and uh, the Matthew Harding really did give Conor a fantastic reception. He gave his shirt obviously to a young fan as well. It was just an incredibly tough watch watching someone like Conor Gallagher who definitely deserves to be at the club a little bit longer potentially 
waving goodbye to us as fans. But I'm hoping it was more of a thank you than a goodbye. And maybe the same with Trevor, because he's had a lot of difficult injuries and it would be difficult to see someone who's been so good for the last few games leave as well. But look, we can't comment too much on that until we do some other videos when some solid transfer news comes out and whatever. But we've left ourselves in sixth place. Obviously, that could potentially mean Europa League football if Manchester City win the FA Cup. If they don't, it means we're going to be in the Conference League. If Manchester United win it, they'll get the Europa League spot. All, all a bit confusing, I know. If we qualify for the Conference League, I believe we're back in August for qualifiers for that as well. So that'll be all fun and games. Imagine if we get qualifiers and then don't get you. Anyway, there were two things to note from the end of the game. One, Pochettino... No speech or anything like that, which isn't really normal in my opinion. I know some clubs are starting to make it the norm. He disappeared down the tunnel with some of his coaching staff after we, st just as we were starting the lap of honour, which I thought was strange, a weird feeling. I thought he'd at least stay out on the pitch. He's now spoke about it afterwards saying he was told to go down the tunnel. That's a strange one for me. Um, and the other thing was that pretty much, I'm pretty sure most of the Chelsea first team squad were there. The only player that was an omission that I could work out was Ben Chilwell. Um, he's obviously not made the England squad and he, he spoke a little bit recently about mental health. I hope Chile's okay. I think it's another one who gets unfair criticism. I don't think he's been helped by his injuries, but um, we have to remember how good Ben Chilwell can be on his day and I, I just hope he's okay. The fact that he wasn't there, I'm not going to delve into why I think that is or anything, but I just hope he's okay. Uh, I hope that's not the last we've seen of Ben Chilwell in a Chelsea shirt as well. That kind of wraps up the game. Afterwards, Chelsea fans are in good spirits. We've sort of, you could tell Chelsea were winning and you could tell Chelsea have been winning games because the atmosphere at Stamford Bridge was a little bit better, in my opinion. Um, let's talk about Pochettino because Pochettino, wow. The rumours haven't really stopped, have they, all season? And, and there's been fans asking for him to leave and then there's been fans asking for him to stay now and then all of a sudden it looks like he's come out in a few press conferences and said he might not be happy he might leave and then they're now predicting that Chelsea are after a youth a youthful manager and um, apparently Kieran McKenna has been in the conversation and Amarim and Deserbi and you name it who haven't who hasn't had their name thrown at the job I just want to say though that if Pochettino had uh, had not made for a rod for his own back throughout this season from some really, really poor managerial decisions, some really poor press conferences, some abysmal tactical ideas, uh, some horrific substitutions, a complete lack of understanding of what it is to be Chelsea... I don't think there'd be any calls for his head because I think people would say that sixth place with this Chelsea team only being three, four, five points away from the top four, whatever it was in the end, is really not that bad. Like, it really isn't that bad. And I think most people would have been okay with that. The The issue for me is, is that because of some of those reasons, we probably didn't get top four because I think the evidence is there to suggest that this team probably could get top four. It's beaten sides comfortably at times that have got top four this season. <clears throat> it's also struggled, I will say that um, but it's struggled in games where they never should have struggled and I think that's been a real issue for Pochettino and like I said there's a few different issues but the way he finished the season in terms of the what was happening on the pitch I felt like it was okay we were really good in the first sort of 60 minutes against Bournemouth and then the substitutions probably didn't help um, and probably the Nottingham Forest game was one of the ones in the last few weeks where I felt like it wasn't great, if I'm being honest with you, for 50, 60 minutes. But the substitutions that he made were good. Second half has been a lot better. That's a massive improvement he's made in recent weeks. And <clears throat> for me, I'm I'm okay with him staying now. If the form continues and we go straight into next season from game one, playing and working our way through matches like we are right now. If we get into the, if we start day one and the excuses start again and we're talking about injuries and he's he's making tactical choices that just are obviously not working and he's not learning and he's misprofiling new signings, then I'll have an issue. And I think that's where <clears throat> the, the no smoke without fire approach comes from. Now he said he's had a chat with Bowley, which 
We know because he said that factually. He's also sort of presumed that it doesn't mean something bad's going to happen after that. But who knows? The American owners might do something in a different way. I think the thing with Pochettino is <clears throat> he he may want some control over signings and the type of squad he can assemble at Chelsea Football Club. Now, the issue for me here is, is that if he hadn't made all those wrong decisions, and don't get me wrong, people can make mistakes and they can get better, but if he hadn't consistently done that for so long and take 30 games to suss out Chelsea Football Club, look, he took us to Wembley twice, but ultimately messed up twice, in my opinion, with a couple of things at Wembley. And look, I know the players didn't help him either. I'm not saying that it's solely on Poch, by the way. I'm just talking about the Poch situation. He he didn't help himself, and he probably didn't help install belief in his ideologies, and the last few games might have helped that cause, but over the whole season, I think the board probably had some reservations and some question marks, which we've seen certain journalists report on. And I think that might be the reason the board doesn't want to let this manager have a bigger involvement in what's happening in terms of transfers and stuff because they don't want to go and spend money on his type of players like we've seen happen in the past with other managers assemble a squad for him it they it all goes wrong and we're stuck with players that only Pochettino wanted what I will say is I made a video last summer on Pochettino's talent ID when it looked like we we just probably got him over the line I think and I I would question some of the talent ID, by the way. He might have ideas about what he wants, and maybe that could be threaded through to the recruitment team, who I think overall have done an okay job, because some players are really starting to look very good now. Let's be honest about that. And I think Pochettino's helped those players to flourish and become how they finish the season, at that sort of level type of players, right? Um... But I'm basically what I'm saying is, why have they seen enough to back Pochettino in terms of transfers and recruitment when if it all starts again how it started this season and went on for 20, 30 games, is that a massive mistake to back a manager like that? When quite evidently, this squad of players with less injuries could probably get us into um, a really good position in the league. Uh, I'm not sure. Do I want to see Poch back? Maybe. I'd like to see maybe his big, like choose his biggest area that he really feels the squad is lacking in because he knows the squad best, apparently. Um, at times you wouldn't think that. And just see what he recruits. Then if we, we go towards January and Christmas and things are looking really bad, you haven't spent too much money. Don't go and buy this manager five, six players. Just don't do it. That's what I would say. Give him a couple, maybe one, maybe two, and let him work with what he's got. And I just think we don't want to rock the boat too much. And that also is something I'd touch on, is if we if we do remove Pochettino from his post or he leaves, I think it's going to just rock the boat again. And the players are going to think, right, hang on a minute we started clicking a little bit under Poch and we all were getting on with him and his man management was really good and we'd finally all started to get each other, which, look, it might take that long when you put that many new people into a building and say, here, achieve this goal. I'm not really sure. Um, but if Poch feels like he's not being back from the board as well, he might decide to leave and I think it'll just really, really rock the boat. I think it really would. So hopefully they can work together as a combined unit and come to some sort of agreement because I'm probably sat here now thinking, honestly, that the right thing to do at this moment in time is probably not sack Pochettino. I think because it didn't happen earlier on in the season when I feel like a real instant impact manager could have come in and made a difference and maybe won us a trophy and turned this squad into winners, I'm now not sure that this is the right time to do it either because I feel like something finally started to look like it was being built. Poch, his team, his coaching staff, the players... They all gave me a bit of evidence towards the end of the season to back them going into this one. Do I think we could get a better manager than Poch? Yes. I think there are now very creditable, viable managers out there that, that could potentially be better than him. Do I think it's the right time? No, because I just think it would put a lot of pressure on the board as to questioning why have you done that when it really didn't finish that badly if we'd had a season like this 
we probably would have been okay with it the whole way through. So I'm a bit intrigued to see what happens because I fully believe there's no smoke without fire and someone somewhere has found out that either the board or Pochettino aren't that happy with a certain situation or a couple of situations at Chelsea Football Club or maybe the season in general. Maybe the board really feel like we should have got Champions League football. And when you look at Villa and the way they finished the season and the way we finished the season, if we'd have got ourselves in gear a little bit earlier on, we probably should have, and Tottenham as well, to add to that matter. Yeah, look, a little bit disappointing, I think, to be honest with you, that, that our form came so late, but also glad that it finally came out of nowhere because we could have been sat here having the discussion that we'd finished in 12th, 11th, 10th, whatever that might have been. And if that had been the case, I probably would have been fully behind the board's decision to remove him from the job. Anyway, look, a lot of chat about Poch and what's going to happen and stuff like that. I'm really not sure. I can't work out this board I can't read them I think because we haven't known what they're about for long enough it wouldn't surprise me either way which is kind of sitting on the fence I know but probably haven't seen enough I'm probably now in the camp that he should stay does that mean I'm potching not fully no does it mean I'm potch out obviously not as well um do I think we can do better yeah prob probably we could I just think Chelsea Football Club and a bit of stability right now is kind of showing that that is what's working best for us. And if that's what's working best right now, we probably shouldn't fix something that isn't broken and hope we see it continuing to work in the same way throughout pre-season and into the next one. If it doesn't, and there are obvious signs, then we can address that situation again. But right now, in the current state, yeah... We, we shouldn't be changing too much. I'm not going to sit here and say I was wrong, though, because what I was seeing wasn't good enough, and either it was Pochettino had to leave, or, quite simply, he had to buck up his ideas. And he did one of the two, which was obviously not leave. He bucked up his ideas, got to work, and started doing some of the stuff Chelsea fans have been crying out for all season long. And I'll give credit to some of those Chelsea fans as well. Identified the issues very early on, on a lot of different subjects that took Pochettino 30 games. Now, I know it's easy to identify and hard to implement, but I'm not sure it even takes 30 games to implement some of those ideologies um, that we finally saw. So, look, let me know your thoughts down below. That's kind of a wrap-up on the final day and where we finished and our sort of hopes. What do you think we have in store over the summer? What do you think about Chelsea Football Club going forward? Are we going to see a new manager? Do you want a new manager? Let me know in the comments down below. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting about Chelsea this season. The 23-24 season has come to an end. Chelsea have finished in sixth place. A, a massive, I think, 20-point improvement on last season. And uh, it's good to see Chelsea potentially being back in Europe next season. Or... Uh, or qualifying for the Conference League if, if Man United had to go on in the FA Cup. So look, let me know your thoughts in the video down below in the comments. I've had um, a great time this season making content for everyone to watch and I've thoroughly enjoyed myself and I hope you've enjoyed watching it too. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you've enjoyed the content throughout the season. We are on the road to 2,500 subs. In fact, by the time you watch this, we might be on the road to three, which would be absolutely amazing. Let's try and smash 20 to 25 likes on a video I'd absolutely love that. All the best for the summer. I hope you enjoy the Euros as well or any continental competition you're going to watch. And we'll be back talking about Chelsea very soon because it's all going to be about managers and transfer news. I can tell you that much this summer. I will see you soon.